In this demo, I'm going to be showing you how to secure your applications and your organization using Tanzu Build Service and Tanzu Application Catalog. Now, I'm going to assume you have some familiarity with what Tanzu Build Service and Tanzu Application Catalog are, but I'll provide you with a short introduction to each here. Tanzu Build Service uses cloud native build packs to allow development teams to simply build their applications into an OCI compliant container image, similar to the CF Push experience available with Cloud Foundry and Tanzu Application Service. And it provides operations teams with a single point to update dependencies like base OS images and language build libraries. And it automatically monitors every image that it builds for any changes to these dependencies and automatically builds new container images whenever one of these layers changes. Now, Tansu Application Catalog provides your organization with a catalog of applications in your own private repository. These applications, too, are continuously monitored for updates to the application layer and base OS layer and automatically updated whenever one of those layers changes. This gives developers a curated list of applications to choose from, whether that be for standalone applications like WordPress or Jenkins, or for build images like Java and Node, or for application backing services like MySQL, as we'll see in a moment. Now, if you remember just one thing from this presentation, remember that using Tanzu Build Service to build and monitor your custom in-house applications, and Tanzu Application Catalog for your other necessary application needs, you can have a standardized, updated, and secure application stack across your entire business. It truly is a better way to build and run your applications. If you'd like a deeper dive into either one of these products, I'll leave some links in the description of this video. So in this demo, the first thing I want to do is give you an overview of the environment I'm working in. This is a local Kubernetes cluster, Docker Desktop, and on it I have running Tanzu Build Service. If you want to know how to install Tanzu Build Service locally, so you can try it out, I'll leave a link to another piece I wrote walking through the install process. So here I have my application already configured as an image to be monitored and built by Tanzu Build Service whenever a layer of my application changes. And with this configuration, Tanzu Build Service has already started and completed its first build of my application. Here I have my Docker Hub credentials stored securely within Kubernetes. And finally, here's the list of builds Tanzu Build Service has performed on my application. As you can see, this is just the first build it completes when adding a new image config. And here we see that config is the reason for this build. And here is another copy of the image that Tanzu Build Service built. By default, it will place new images in the default namespace as well as whichever repository was configured in the image, in this case, Docker Hub. For configuration purposes, I have just left this as default. As Tanzu Build Service completes more builds, more completed images will show up here, as well as in Docker Hub. Also, Tanzu Application Catalog is set up and pushing applications to my private GCR repository. On the back end, Tanzu Application Catalog is building for me a ton of applications I can use in my services and making them available as Helm charts or as plain OCI images. A little later in this demo, I'll be setting up Helm to pull from this repo and deploy an image. Okay, so that's the environment as it stands now. Next, let's deploy our custom application. Now, as you saw earlier, the application image we are about to deploy was built using Tanzu Build Service, which is in turn using cloud native build packs to give me a truly cloud native experience when it comes to building my code. Additionally, the images on which Tanzu Build Service builds and runs my code are fully up to date with the latest patches. And through its image configuration, anytime anything changes to the dependencies my container uses, Tanzu Build Service will build me a new container ready to be deployed into production using automated pipelines. Okay, now before I deploy this application, let's take a look at the deployment YAML. Here you can see the repository I'm pulling from, my personal Docker Hub, where Tanzu Build Service is pushing my application. Next, notice the image pull policy. I have this set to always, so that to update the container to the latest build, all I have to do is delete the old one. You would obviously do this differently in production, using a continuous delivery pipeline or something similar. Again, this simple setup is just for demonstration purposes. And finally, I have this section commented out. I will uncomment this later after we deploy MySQL. This, and a couple other changes to my application, 
will allow the application to connect to MySQL. By default, this application uses H2, an in-memory database that will not persist across container deletes or multiple container replicas. OK, now I'll go ahead and deploy the application with my deployment YAML. And here I'll wait for the container to become ready. OK, there we go. And that's really all there is to it. As you can see, from a developer's point of view, there was very little which changed for me, except maybe the source line of my deployment YAML. And for that change, Tanzu Build Service will continually keep my container images up to date with the latest dependencies. And as an operator, I get the peace of mind of having a centralized control plane, where when the next inevitable critical security vulnerability is published, I can simply push out an update either to include the base OS patch or an updated build library, and all the containers in my environment that are managed by Tanzu Build Service will be patched and ready to be deployed. This keeps your customers safe and your business out of the headlines. OK, so next I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of this application and how data persists in this in-memory database. Now, in order to access this application interface from outside the cluster, I need to expose the deployment with a service. I just call this one Hello Clinic. And there we go. Now I can flip over to my browser. And refresh. And there's our application, complete with cute baby animals. OK, now I'm going to add a record to my application's in-memory database. This is just the there's nothing up my sleeve portion of the demo. Basically, I'm going to show you that this data will not be persistent since our application is currently using an in-memory database. OK, there we go. And there is our new owner. OK, now let's go back and delete our container. Now I'll just wait for the new container to become available. OK, and back to the browser. Refresh, and the user is gone. Again, the application is using an in-memory database, so this is expected. But what if I want the data for my veterinary office here to persist? Well, I'll need to add a persistent database, right? But which one, and from where? So that's what I'm going to be doing next. I'm going to install MySQL, but not just any MySQL my own, hardened, private version of MySQL based on the Bitnami image, which will be automatically patched and updated for me. But what if I didn't have Tanzu Application Catalog? Where would I install MySQL from then? Well, I could go to Docker Hub and do a quick search for MySQL. But man, which of these 22,000 odd options do I choose? For an organization at any scale, different teams deploying different stacks from different locations can lead to a lot of issues down the road. Now here, in Tanzu Application Catalog, if I want to deploy with a Helm chart, I have access to just one option. And here, I'm provided with a ton of metadata about my image and the layers it's built upon, the version, when it was released, even a report about its latest vulnerability scan. And with Tanzu Application Catalog being powered by Bitnami, I can trust that it will all continually be updated for me automatically. OK. Now I'll go ahead and add my TAC repository to Helm. And there it is. OK, now I'll go ahead and install the application. Here, I'm just setting up some super secure credentials and creating a new database for my application to connect to. So now I'll just wait for this to deploy. OK, there we go. So that's all there is, really. Like Tanzu Build Service, as a developer deploying this application, nothing really changed except the source of the image. And for that very minor, almost transparent change, I get to know that, along with automated deployment pipelines, my application stacks are going to be up to date, patched, and secured automatically. Again, keeping my customers and organization safe and secure automatically. Okay. 
Now I need to make a couple minor edits to my application to allow it to connect to the new MySQL instance. First, in the application.properties file, I'm just going to tell the application to use MySQL instead of H2. Pretty handy. Next, in the MySQL properties, I'm just going to uncomment this line I added earlier to give the application the URL to the local MySQL cluster running in Kubernetes. And finally, I'm going to uncomment those lines in the deployment YAML to make MySQL the active profile. Okay, that's it. Now I'm just going to get this added, committed, and pushed. Right to the main branch, of course. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Tanzu Build Service is monitoring this application for changes. So once my commit goes through my non-existent CI pipelines, Tanzu Build Service will pick up the commit as a change and build me a new container. It will even tell me that it's building this new container based on a new commit. Now, I'll just wait for that to complete. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is a pretty major change. So for my demo environment here, I'm going to need to completely delete this deployment. There are probably better ways to do this to limit downtime with rolling updates and deletes. But again, this is just a demo and I just work in marketing. Okay, now I'll redeploy my latest build with the new active profile and configured properties. And I'll just wait for that to complete. And refresh. Now, obviously nothing has changed in the UI, so I'll repeat my experiment from earlier. I'll re-add my owner. And there we go. Okay, now I'll go ahead and delete my pod. and wait for a new one to come up and start. And refresh again. And there we go, my new owner persisted. My application stack is now not only fully patched, updated, tested, and secured, but now it's also stateful. So thanks for watching. I hope you saw how Tanzu Build Service and Tanzu Application Catalog together can help keep your applications and services up to date and secure automatically. Thanks a bunch and enjoy the rest of the conference.